All right, everybody, welcome back to another Rogue Leveling Guide. Again, my name is Everglass. I told you all I was going to be producing a bunch of these. If you've checked out the Glass Cannon build, which is all around single target damage, but you, uh, as it says, you can get smashed pretty easily, so it's really focused around mobility and making sure everything is in there. This one is going to be a little bit more tanky, um, so we're going to go ahead and check this one out. This one has a great uh, damage. Don't think I'm taking anything away about it, but it is focused a little bit more on survivability. So this one is going to be probably better for your uh, capstone dungeon build when you get all geared out and everything in there. You can see that down here on Tanky Ninja. So let's go ahead and jump into this. We're going to skip all of this uh, for now, and we're going to go over here and let me clear the skill tree out so we can walk through it just like we did last time. Just like last time, we are going to take our puncture first i talked a little bit about invigorating strikes um in the last uh video if you think you're going to have a problem with the energy regeneration or you're just now getting started with diablo and you're not sure how all that works i might take invigorating strike just to make sure you're getting that extra 20 percent energy regeneration uh out of the gate and then you can continue with that after our first level though if you're sticking with the build you're going to take enhanced puncture right uh, which gives you two energy for every time you crowd control an enemy. Now, remember, Puncture gives you that every third cast slows an enemy by 20% for two seconds. So then you're always going to be getting this energy production, this gain to energy when uh, it punctures crowd control. You're always going to be crowd controlling people uh, with Puncture, which is really good. Then we're going to jump into our Twisting Blades tree. Uh, for our next couple of levels, we're going to go again. We're going to go Twisting Blades. We're going to Enhance Twisting Blades. And then we are going to go to Advanced Twisting Blades, right? Again, Twisting Blades is our main damage dealer, our core skill. It is imbuable, right? Gives us uh, that Impale. Enemies with your blades dealing 45% damage at the base level. They take 8% increased damage from you while they're impaled. And when they return, the blades return from you. They pierce enemies for 72% of that damage. So again, stab somebody, run away. Uh, through the rest of the enemies, dash away from them, shadow step away from them, and then let those twisting blades come back and just wreck uh, everybody. Once we're done with that, we're going to come up here and we're going to take fundamental puncture. So that way now, remember from the previous video, we are always throwing in that vulnerable and there, as long as we're hitting those two enemies. So now we're vulnerable everybody. We're making them take more damage. And as those twisting blades come back, they're just going to cut everybody down on that return trip. So once we're done with vulnerable, uh, once we take the fundamental puncture, we're going to open up this. Then we're going to take our dash, which is our first movement skill. Then we're going to take our shadow step, uh, which is great uh, for that. So now we can dash around the thing. Uh, now we can dash around the mobs. And now we can shadow step across. So we're making sure we're always getting distance between us and the mobs where our twisting blades are so they can cut people down on the way back because that's where this build really shines. So we're going to come up here. We're going to take our next four points into twisting blades, which is going to be really good. Now, down here, a lot of people have been maybe taking concealment so they can get a little bit thing here. There is a trap build uh, that I've been messing around with as I'm learning more about traps from some of the great content creators that are out there uh, that I've been tooling around with. We might do that one later. I don't have any experience with that build um, actually playing it in any of the betas, so I haven't got to test anything with it. And I'm kind of wary about making recommendation or doing something that I haven't tested. Uh, but anyway, so then we're going to come down. Dark Shroud is a must here right so that way uh we can get this at this point too you'll be level 15 uh so you'll be able to get your uh combo skills um in there uh as you finish this off and then you'll be able to get combo points so go ahead and do that mission for your uh rogue unlock comma uh unlock your combo points and run combo points for the next couple of levels until you get inner sight and we'll talk about that in just a minute right so then we're going to get this then we're going to come up once we're done with uh, Enhanced. Then we're going to take our Dark Shroud. Then we're going to come up and take Enhanced Dash. Excuse me. This is where you would get at level 15. We were level 14 right there. This is where you're going to get Enhanced Dash, right? That's going to give you extra critical strike from enemies that take uh, Dash from you for five seconds. Then you're going to come down and you're going to take Discipline Dash, right? Which slows enemies. So now we're getting extra critical hit damage. And you're now slowing enemies by 30%. Uh, and if they're already slowed from your puncture remember and you dash into them they're not going to be dazed for two seconds so again we're just stacking up the damage here right after that that we're going to go ahead after we're done with that we're going to come back here we're going to take enhanced shadow step and then we are going to uh come down and we're ready to take our first shadow imbuement which is great remember that shadow imbuement imbues festering weapons 
And your next two imbutable skills deal shadow damage and infect enemies for six seconds and infected enemies explode on death, dealing 40% damage. So this is an amazing CC tool, especially once you get that Blade Master's aspect and those things start swirling around you all crazy. All right. So now we've got our first shadow imbuement. Then we are going to take enhanced shadow imbuement to get that extra 15% critical strike chance against inner enemies affected by shadow imbuement. Then we are going to take our mixed shadow imbuement right here, right? Infected enemies by shadow imbuement take 12% non-physical damage from you for eight seconds. Now we're taking that one because as they come back, as the twisting blades come back, they're non-physical. All right, there we go. Then... Once there, so now we are level 20. So we've now unlocked Inner Sight. So we're going to switch to that over the combo points. And then we are going to take uh, our first point into Shadow Crash. And then we are going to go three points into Consuming Shadows. So one point into Shadow Crash to give our lucky hit chance up to 10% chance to stun. Right? And then three points into Consuming Shadows. So each time you kill an enemy with Shadow Damage, you're generating 30 energy out of the gate, which is pretty awesome. Okay. Okay. Then we're going to come up here and we are going to take our Discipline Shadow Step. So Shadow Step's cooldown is reduced by three seconds when it damages an enemy and you have not hit with Shadow Step for at least four seconds. So again, we're working on our cooldowns here and we're getting here. Then after we take our uh, Discipline Shadow Step, we are going to come down and we're going to take Enhanced Dark Shroud. And after Enhanced Dark Shroud, we are going to take Countering Dark Shroud. Now... Enhanced Dark Shroud, Shadows have a 10% chance to not be consumed. So again, if you remember from Enhanced Dark Shroud here, surround yourself with up to five protective shadows that gain 8% damage reduction per active shadow. So that's 40% damage reduction while all five are up. And then each time you take direct damage, that damage is reduced and a shadow is consumed, right? So at five, you're getting 40. At four, um, you're getting uh, 32, so on and so forth down uh or sorry um yeah 32 then here you go you got a 10 percent chance now for a shadow to not be consumed which is great this reminds me a lot of the shadows in uh the final fantasy mmos which are pretty good and then you're countering dark shells while you have at least four shadow actives from dark shell you gain eight percent critical strike chance so again we're stacking critical strike we're stacking movement we're stacking cc and vulnerability to make it uh, a pretty good cloud crew now if you had to ask me what I'm going to run between my glass cannon build and this build, I don't know. Gla my glass cannon build is really fun. I spent a lot of time in the first weekend um, of the beta with it, and then I switched to this to play around with it in the second weekend. I think the glass cannon build is going to be a lot of fun to just level up with and just rip through things because I'm most likely going to play World Tier 1 uh, as I'm going through the campaign. And then once I get ready for that capstone dungeon, I'm going to respect to this build for the survivability um and the extra damage that we get out of our twisting blades uh on this build all right so then once we get our countering dark shroud we move into our precision imbuement uh right here so we're going to take three precision imbuements and again imbued skills increase critical uh, gain nine percent increased critical strike chance that's huge then we're going to come up here as we start to get into this we're going to take three points into sturdy and then we're going to take our siphoning strikes uh, one into there, and then we're going to come down after we take one into Siphoning Strikes, and we're going to take a Momentum, and I can never remember what a Momentum is. <laughs> when I'm doing this... Oh, Momentum is our thing down here. Now, in my last video, that's our passive. That's why I can never remember it is where it is. So, Close Quarters Combat, you've got... This is the one I would take in... I took in the Glass Cannon build. And in momentum, we're going to take this right here. So cutthroat skills grant a stack of momentum for eight seconds. If they either hit a stunned, dazed, or frozen enemy, where we're, we're stunning and we're dazing all over the place. And then while at least three stacks of momentum, you gain 20% increased damage reduction, 30% increased energy reduction, and 15% increased movement speed. So we're moving around a whole ton. We're jumping around the map and we're gaining energy back for, and we can just be throwing twisting blades out all over the place, right? So again, at this point, if you have been running Invigorating Strikes, highly recommend switching off, back off to Puncture, right? Because now you have more than enough energy re regeneration as you're taking Momentum, and then you're taking your Consuming Shadows. This build does not run an ultimate uh, line, so you don't have to worry about it. We're not going to take anything there uh, but passives. So now we've got a Momentum, 
And then we are going to come up and we are going to finish off our siphoning strikes. Then we're going to come down here and we're going to grab uh, exploit. We're going to go three into that and then we're going to three into malice, right? So now we're going to get uh, deal 18% increased damage to healthy enemies and then we're going to be dealing and we're deal 9% increased damage to vulnerable enemies. So now again, we're stacking more damage here, right? Then after we're done with malice, we're going to jump back up here and we're going to take three into weapon mastery. And then we are going to take uh, our last three actual skill points that we get into intervention, which gives us a up to 30% chance to gain eight energy on a lucky hit. Now, that takes us through our campaign leveling. If you have been working on the Renown, right, you have an extra 10 points to go with here. So what I like to do uh, with those extra 10 points is I like to go, you know, throw some in an Adrenaline Rush and then haste because while at above 50% of max energy, which you always should be with this build because you're always reproducing, we're getting a ton of energy off of it. Uh, gain 15% increased movement speed while below maximum, uh, while below 50% maximum energy, gain energy gain 15% increased attack speed, right? So you're always getting something uh, out of haste, which is really good. Then we're going to come up, heck, and we're going to finish Shadow Imbue. Uh, so we get that. And then we're going to throw our last po two points into dash to uh, get the increased cooldown there. So there it is. Again, the big thing here, remember, is you want to make sure as you're going through, there's a whole bunch of different aspects you can run on this thing. Specialization we're running is Inner Sight as soon as you unlock it. And you want to make sure the thing that makes this build really sing is the blade dancers aspect and one thing you always want to keep in mind and i know i've said this uh, a couple times in a couple of my videos then there is a couple people that have uh done this in uh said this in other videos uh i've referenced all of them in the the, the diablo resources is the big one here is make sure that you're putting your blade dancers aspect not in your main weapon because you're always gonna have to change that out I like to put it on my bow because generally your bow, you're not going to swap out that much um, because your bow is just there as a stat, a stat stick uh, for your main weapon. So you can throw it on there and you don't have to replace your bow. And then plus you get 100% of the bonus versus the 50% when you stick it on an amulet or wing. A couple of the other ones you can th take a look at is the Edge Master uh, Codex, right? Skills deal up to 10 to 20% increased damage based on your available primary resource. That's a pretty good one. There's also the Imbue uh aspect of intimidated abutments right shadow clones also mimic imbuement skills which is good uh actually no it's not that one that's not the one i was thinking of is it the bursting venoms no nope. unstable abutments that's what i'm thinking of All right so as you get that in the dry steps when casting an abutment skill you trigger an imbued explosion right so now whenever you're casting your shadows you're gonna blow those out of the you're gonna blow those out of the board. Um, I think the gloves that everybody is gonna be going for are the grasp of the shadows, right? Because lucky hit damage on a vulnerable enemy with a marksman or cutthroat skill has a up to a twenty to thirty percent chance to summon a shadow clone that mimics your attack. So now you're basically now getting a shadow clone the whole time. So I think that's what everybody's gonna get into there. But anyway, guys, all right. So that is the tanky ninja. Uh, we're going to get into one of the other builds next. I'm not sure where I'm going to go. Uh, we'll probably talk about the flurry one because that's a good viable build to run as you're taking your time getting through the campaign. If you're not going to blitz it to get up to Skoslin, uh to get Blade Dancer's aspect because you can get the encircling blades aspect. Uh, it is the quest. You get that one right out of the gate. Uh, once you get your quest uh, to start getting your specializations. But anyway, if you guys like what you saw again, as always, hit that like and subscribe button down below and we you will uh, check out there i'll put a link to uh, the build here in um the description anyway guys take care and we will see you next time